So I wanted to say a few more words about confidence intervals before we moved on. And so I've drawn here our population distribution. And this, for the sake of this discussion, let's say it's a pretty normally distributed population. It has a population parameter uh, mean of mu, and it has a standard deviation here of sigma. And we know that approximately two standard deviations away from the mean on either side encompasses 95% of all the values. Now, I said two, but technically it's 1.96. If you look at the Z tables, it'll say that 1.96 is the number that uh, will, is, is for the 95%, that it would encompass 95% of it. But a lot of the statistics books I look at use two as the number, so we can go with two. It's an easier number. So I wrote here that if you have a 95, if you want a 95% confidence interval, you have to take uh, x bar plus or minus 1.96 of the standard deviation. Now, if you want a different confidence intervals, then we would need to use different numbers. So if we wanted a 90% confidence interval, we'd have to use 1.645. If we wanted a 99% confidence interval, then we'd use 2.58 times the standard deviation, and so, these values you could get out of a, a z-table. And if you want to know the names of these things, I don't think you really have to, but I'll tell you. This thing here is called the confidence coefficient or the confidence level. We already know that this is called the confidence interval, but we can break each one of these things up. x-bar in this case is our estimator and this number that we get from the z-table, that's called our reliability factor. And then this term is called our precision. It's also called the margin of error. That's how you might hear it when, you're, when you listen to pollsters talk, and they talk about uh, you know, candidate A is ahead of candidate B by 5% with a margin of error of 3%. So that means plus or minus 3%. Now, looking at these, you might say, why do we use a 95% confidence interval? Why not just use a 99% confidence interval? Because that seems more confident, and it seems that we're more likely to get uh, this real value in there. Well, if you think about it, let's, let's think about it. So we have 2.58 times, a sig times uh, the standard deviation. So that would probably come all the way out to here, so that would widen this interval. I mean, it, these would be symmetric. I just can't draw very well. Uh, so this makes this wider. So let's take a look again at our, at our example of trying to guess the heart rate of the entire U.S. population. So I'm going to exaggerate the numbers a little bit for effect. So let's say uh, for a 95% confidence interval of the heart rate of the U.S. population, we say that it's somewhere between 65 and 85. And we say, all right, that's, that sounds reasonable. The mean heart rate of the U.S. population, there's a 95, you know, it's probably in here. And I have 95% confidence in that, meaning if I did this experiment 90, 100 times, 95% of the time this confidence interval would, would include it. Now, what if I wanted to use a 99% confidence interval? Uh, well, then, uh, we, the values might be something like 40 to 120, and uh, you'd say, yeah, of course it's in here. This range is very, very huge, and so it doesn't really tell me that much. But I am 99% sure that I'm going to get um, the mean heart rate in here, because most people have a heart rate between you know, 60 and 100, so that's definitely included in here. So the bigger the confidence interval, you lose some of the, of the value of this, this estimation because it, it's, it's not as precise then, right? Because if you think of a poll, if you have a poll that said uh, candidate A is ahead of candidate B by 5%, plus or minus 2%, you'd say, hey, that's, that's a pretty good poll, as opposed to another one that says candidate A is ahead of candidate B, by 5%, plus or minus 30%. You're like, what the heck? That's totally useless. The, 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 the precision there is, the margin of error is huge in that pool. So that's why it's a trade-off. 
if, if, of the confidence here. Now, how, how else can you make the, this thing smaller? Because remember, the smaller this range is, the better. It tells us more. And so one way to do it, remember, this thing is something that we calculate. This, this is how we get the confidence. You know, we get our estimator, and that's, we, we, we can't really change that. That's what we get from our sample. This we get from whichever uh, confidence coefficient we choose. So that, again, is also something we can't change. So can we change this? Well, what were we using for, as our estimate for this? If you remember, we were using the standard error. And the standard error is the population standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. I didn't initially write those in there, but I drew them in now. They were just... I just kept them off before to keep it a little bit cleaner. Now the standard deviation of the population, this is a population parameter, we can't change that. So the only real thing we could change is this. And so if we want to make our standard error smaller, we want to make n bigger. So if you do a study, you, the bigger the sample size, the smaller the standard error and the narrower your confidence interval is. So you'll see if you have a study that has 10 people in it, you look at it with a little bit more skepticism than you would look at a study that had a thousand people in it. So studies do tend to try to increase the sample size to what is feasible, the biggest that they can actually get so that they can have smaller confidence intervals. And another thing you should notice is that it's it's not over the sample size, but the square root of the sample size. So if you want to make your confidence interval half, if you want to make the, the, the interval half the size, then you have to actually quadruple your sample size. If you want to make your confidence interval one-fourth of this size, then you got to actually take your uh, sample size and multiply it. you got to take 16 times larger a sample. And so the bigger the sample size, the tighter the confidence interval, but it's it's, you got to remember that it's a square root of the sample size here. And so you really have to increase the sample size. So you can see that it can become pretty uh, inconvenient. You, you can't, if you want to make this thing 10 times uh, smaller, more, more narrow, then you got to take a sample size that is uh, 10 times 10, 100, 100 times bigger. And maybe you can't enroll 100 patients because it's too expensive, it's too time consuming. It, it just can't be done. And so that's another one of the trade-offs we have. So, I just want to make one more nitpicky uh, uh, detail. And so here I've represented a confidence interval centered around our sample mean. So this is our estimator. And this is a 95% confidence interval. I said that over here. What this does not mean, this doesn't mean that there's a 95% chance that our population mean is in here. It, and so here's a population mean that happens to fall in this interval. It doesn't mean that there's a 95% probability that this is in here. Because technically, this population mean is either in here or it's not. It's either yes or it's no. We just don't know that, but the probability is either 0 or 1. Take, for instance, another sample. And so for this sample mean, here's this one's confidence interval. Again, it's a 95% confidence interval. And this mean here, our population mean, does not fall within here. So the probability that the population mean is in here is zero. The probability that the pro population mean is in this interval is one. And so we can't use this 95% and say it's a probability that we know the sample mean because it really technically isn't and some sticklers are going to are going to hold you to that. What it really means is if we took a hundred of these sorts of confidence intervals, or a thousand, or a million, or whatever, ninety-five percent of the time we're going to catch the sample mean within it. Five percent of the time we're going to miss the sample mean. But for any particular one, we don't really know that it's in or not. But we've we have 95% confidence that it is because 95% of the time it is going to be. So technically, it's not a probability, this 95%. It's your confidence. That's why we call it a confidence coefficient. We never say it's the probability that we know the, the population. I mean, it's a confidence. It's my uh, confidence that I, that I have this in here. It's a subtle point, 
but it's, I think it's an important point worth noting. If you're confused about this, please put some comments down below and I'd be happy to explain. Okay, bye.